Hi, this is Marilyn Michaels, and you are listening to TV Confidential. I've got the world on a string Sitting on a rainbow Brad Robertson welcoming you back to TV Confidential Radio Talk Show about television and is happy to welcome one of the most Exciting singers in music today, Ms. Julie Budd. Julie began her professional career at the age of 12 in a Catskills Mountains talent show. In just six months' time, Julie not only made her national television debut on the Merv Griffin Show, but signed a major recording contract and went on to co-star with the likes of Frank Sinatra, Joan Rivers, George Burns, Bob Hope, Bill Cosby, Milton Berle, Marvin Hamlish, and Liberace in concert halls all over the world. Julie Budd will be appearing at the Birdland Theater in New York City next week as this program airs. She also has a new CD out that pays tribute to one of her showbiz mentors, Frank Sinatra. We'll tell you more about that in just a second. But first, Julie Budd, welcome to TV Confidential. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, thank you for being on our show. If I have my dates right... You just recently performed songs from your Sinatra CD earlier in April. Well, yeah, well, I've been doing the show all over the place, so your facts are right. It doesn't even matter about the date. (laughs) 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 Because I've been doing that show all over the place. And you know what? It's so funny. You could go anywhere in the world, and I tell them that I have this tribute show that I do to Frank Sinatra, but the difference between my show and other people's shows, is the fact that I knew him Mm -hmm. and I worked with him. Mm -hmm. So I'm not getting up there with a big band trying to sound or look like Frank Sinatra, you know, the way a lot of these folks do, and I'm sure that's fun and fine. But that's not what we're doing with my show. My show is really a loving tribute and a personal story about this person that I knew and that I performed with, and I got to know his family a little bit, and it, it just was a... It's a very, very human look at Frank Sinatra and the music. Right, because you're like 12 years old, 12, 13 years old when you're performing with Sinatra, and he showed a a more tender side, a more fatherly side to you. Well, uh, what happened was I I came into show business when I was 12, Mm -hmm. and when I worked with Mr. Sinatra, I was barely 16. I was 15 and a half, actually, when I met Mr. Sinatra, and... And I went over to Caesar's Palace, and I had this huge contract at Caesar's, and he had been at the Sands and the Riviera, and all those contracts were now expired for him. And he, he had gotten a, a huge, huge, huge uh, introduction to the folks over at Caesar's, and they wanted to bring him there. And they did, and there was a lot of hoopla about the fact that he was leaving the Sands, which was his homestead, mm-hmm. the Riviera, and leaving these two venues and going over to Caesars, which was the sort of new shiny kid at that time on the box. So there they were, dying to have him. And they wanted him to have a little something new in his show. I mean, he always had Pat Henry and, and him, but, but, but they really wanted something new. And I also think that he wanted a little bit of insurance. You know, he was now in his late 50s. He had put a lot of miles on his voice, and I think that he didn't want to stand up there and do two, two and a half hours Mm -hmm. of singing every night. And he was happy to have an opening act, and he was happy to have, you know, a little bit of something there to fill some time. And, of course, we all knew that the draw was Mr. Sinatra, and they were all there to see him, and it was all very exciting. But I have to tell you, he was marvelous to me. He treated me like a family member. Mm -hmm. Anything I needed, he was absolutely there for me. I found him to be extremely intelligent, just a a very nice person, and a lot different than what people had warned me that he would be about, what he was going to be like. and You know, he was different with a lot of different people, but a lot of different people were not always so legitimate with him either, you know, so he was out to protect his his interests. Yeah, he, he he gave back what he got. He gave back what he got, and he was, I have to say, in all the time, you know, that I had spent around with, I found him to be a pretty honest guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was, what you saw was what you got, 
And, yeah, he had his moods, and yeah, but you know what? A lot of performers are like that because they are, um, they're nervous. They have a lot to lose. There's a lot on their plates. Everyone's always judging them. Everybody's always criticizing. People are making up stories about them that aren't even true. I mean, people are just, oh, anything to be close to them, yeah. you know, even if, even if it's not true. And uh, you know what was interesting about it, too? What it was like to be around that kind of mania. You know, I had worked with, you know, headlining people before, and I had, you know, by the time I was 15, 16, I have to say I was a pro. I had, you know, had a CBS television contract, mm -hmm. and I had been on Carol Burnett's show, and I had worked with her for a week doing skits and, and dance numbers. and I mean, I was a kid that never did anything. I was a kid from Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. They picked me off the street. You know, I mean, I, I was just there, and I was learning from the seat of my pants I was flying, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I worked with Liberace, and I worked with Bob Hope and Milton Berle, and I worked with huge, huge stars, George Burns. But I never worked with anybody. Liberace, my God, Liberace was an angel. But I never worked with anybody where there was such mania around him as I did with Frank Sinatra. Julie's latest CD, Remembering Mr. Sinatra, features nine tracks, uh, including Julie's interpretation of All the Way and Come Rain, Come Shine, Remembering Mr. Sinatra, as well as Julie's other CDs are available Amazon iTunes, CD Baby, wherever music is sold online, Julie Budd's website, juliebud.com. You mentioned how honest Frank was, if I may call him Frank. Uh, <laughs> I, I always called him Mr. Sinatra. It just felt right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, and, I, and, and I was 15 and a half. I wasn't <laughs> 15. You know, people say to me, oh, Julie, you worked with Mr. Sinatra when you were 16. I really wasn't, you know? Yeah. But, oh, I want to mention to our listeners, if I can, sure. that I'm going to be at Birdland Theater. Birdland in Theater in New, New York. Yes, yes, I'm going to be there May 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And the show is called The Songs of My Life and the Composers That Wrote Them. And that's because not only did I get to know all the people like Frank Sinatra and Bob Hope and Liberace and... And George Burns and Bert Backrack and all these people. But I got to know the composers that were able to furnish these enormous legends with material that they could really hang their hat on, that they could really land their career on, you know? Mm -hmm. And people like Julie Stein and Cy Coleman and Dorothy Fields and Bert Backrack and Hal David and Michelle Legrand and Marvin Hamlish and Laura Nero and Carol King and, you know, all these people, Barry Manilow. And I mean, I, I grew up, I grew up getting to know who these wonderful, wonderful people were. And I was very fortunate because I grew up hearing extraordinary music, extraordinary music, uh, music that really trained my ear for the rest of my life. And, you know, a lot of the other kids were listening to a lot of other types of things, and that's all great because mm -hmm. I enjoyed that too. But I really understood the importance of the American Songbook, and I was really, really drawn to it. And I think that's why people like Liberace and Frank Sinatra and Carol Burnett, I think that's why they were interested in working with me, because it was unusual at that time when the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and the Cream and, you know, everybody, Grateful Dead, they were all out there. And, and there I was, you know, loving Julie Andrews and loving Hammerstein and loving Rhapsody in Blue by Gershwin and... And I was very young, and but I think I owe a lot to my mother mm -hmm. because my mother was a very, very, very sophisticated woman, and she was a very fine, fine woman, and she was a great artist herself. She was a great painter, a great cook, a great songstress. My mother was an artistic person, and so was her father. He was a, a designer, and I think my mother facilitated this in me. She brought home 
um, movie soundtracks and, and original cast mm-hmm. albums and symphonies and uh, she she took me to museums. I remember my father and my mother on weekends making all us kids get dressed up. We went into Manhattan because you know we lived in Brooklyn. And we we came into Manhattan, and we went from one museum exhibit to the next. Mm-hmm. My and we were very young, but my parents it took us to Europe, Asia, all over. They wanted to expose us to culture, and I think that I owe all of this wild expectation about my life in music and and being able to believe I could do it to my parents. Because I think they were really my first teachers. Julie Budd will be performing the songs of my life and the composers who wrote them at the Birdland Theater in New York City from Wednesday, May 1st through Saturday, May 4th. Through tickets and more information, go to birdlandjazz.com for more information about uh, Julie's show, The Songs of My Life, and the composers who wrote them. Go to juliebud.com. Calm. You mentioned the word honesty, and you mentioned the sort of presence that was kind of cultivated that that you learned from your parents, but also that brought that that you brought as a performer even at a very 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 young age. I understand one of the things you learned from Sinatra, in particular, was the importance of choosing when 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 you put together your act, whether it's your act today or whenever you put together a show. The importance of putting, of choosing songs, choosing material that was right for you, Julie. But that's a journey. Remember, that doesn't happen overnight, mm-hmm. and that doesn't happen because somebody who's very smart happens to suggest it, because it has to resonate with you. You know, finding your work, I think, in anything you do, is a journey. It's a journey, and you've got to get to know your your instrument and who your audience is and what feels deeply to you and what you connect to, what you sound great singing, the kind of things that you want to do and express up there. You know, that doesn't happen overnight. And uh, just because somebody has a great voice, just because somebody is interesting up there, doesn't mean that, you know, they know that yet. And I think that all the people that worked with me understood that, you know, I was very young. I was, I was a work in progress. And I was taking it all in. I was taking it all in, but it was very, very clear where my interests were. It was always in the dramatic ballads. It was always, you know, whether it was a contemporary piece or a piece from the American songbook from way back when, it was always something that was loaded with depth. Mm-hmm. And I think that they were attracted to that. And so were the writers. So the show that, you know, I'm doing at Birdland is is a tribute to all of those writers that I had that privilege to know. And it's a pleasure to do their work. People like Jerry Herman and Julie Stein and and Burt Backrack, one of the nicest people in the business was Hal David. Hal David and Burt Backrack were both Bert's a lovely, lovely, lovely man. And um, I remember when I was a little girl, actually, his father had a radio show here in New York. His parents were, you know, socialite and very theatrical people and very well known here in New York. And I knew his parents when I was a very, very small girl. Mm-hmm. I, I knew his father. He was a lovely man. But these were terrific, terrific people. And they're behind the scenes. And very often people don't really know anything about them. People like Michelle Legrand was such a nice nice man. I did a TV special with him, and actually we got a, an Emmy Award in Florida for, for the show that we did together. He was just a charming, charming, brilliant, kind man. And um, it's so sad when we start to lose them, yeah. because we feel like we're losing these diamonds. Well, because, look, we're not only losing diamonds, but regardless of what type of particular type of music we like as people when it, when a favorite artist or or, or or great artist dies it's like a part of us dies because we connected with their music well we now we connected because we remembered oh i heard it when my son was born yeah or or i heard it at my 
father's funeral. Mm -hmm. Or I heard it when I used to come to New York with my grandma. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it resonates on a very, very deep place. They shared our lives a bit with us, mm -hmm. you know. And also I got to know them. It's a whole other thing because I traveled with Marvin Hamlish for seven years. You know, I knew his mom. I knew his sister, God bless her. I, I knew I knew his family and um, his nephew. Marvin and I were friends for 30 years or more. Mm -hmm. You know, to, it's more than just the music stops. You know, people like Marvin, he was an electric light bulb. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew him or if you ever met him. He was, he was an extraordinary person. And brilliant, brilliant man. To lose that, it's 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 a lot. But we go on, and their music is here. And as long as we're singing it, you know, it's kind of like what Mr. Sinatra said to me. And he said to me, Julie, if you don't do this music, no one is going to know it ever happened. That's right. And because you, that's what he said to me. Yeah. But he, he made me. He made me promise him that I was <laughs> going to continue to do this music. And because you're fulfilling that promise, you are keeping all these great, you know, the work of all these great composers alive and introducing their work to new audiences as well. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully that is the goal. That it's, it's <laughs> because I remember Mr. Sinatra said to me, he said, Julie, you know, when I go, he said, if you don't do this, no one's going to know it was here. Mm -hmm. He said, it's like, it's like any other art that needs to be passed down through generations, he says, and I, he says, your instrument is the instrument to do this. He said, so please promise me that you'll always sing Richard Rogers, you'll always sing Gershwin, you'll sing Cole Porter, you know, you'll sing the fine new composers that come along. You know who Frank loved? He loved Rod McEwen. I can, I can, I can see that. Yep. I can he, see that. He was... He was a, a lyric man, you yeah. know, and he loved Rod McEwen. Mm -hmm. He loved Joe Beam. He just loved that. And if somebody was connected and poignant, even if they weren't somebody from the old school, you know, he would pay attention to their talent. He loved Paul Anka. Yeah. He loved, well, Paul. He loved Paul Anka. Paul wrote several songs for him, including My Way. Well, what happened was My Way was a song that was already written. It was a big hit in France and in Italy. And when Paul Anka heard it, same thing with Let Me Try Again. When, when he heard it, he wanted to bring it to the United States, but there was no English lyric on that song. So he sat down and he wrote an English lyric to both songs, mm -hmm. and they were both hits for Sinatra. We're talking to Julie Budd. Julie Budd, the legendary singer-actress whom Merv Griffin famously dubbed the mini girl with the maxi voice, We'll take a quick time out, and we'll continue our conversation with Julie Budd here on TV Confidential. Alexa users, you can now listen to TV Confidential on your smart speaker just by saying, Alexa, play TV Confidential. Enabling the TV Confidential Alexa skill is easy. To find out how to do it, go to televisionconfidential.com forward slash Alexa. Uber is the mobile app that connects you with a driver for immediate transportation. Request a ride at the tap of a button and you have a driver curbside in minutes. You can choose to be driven in a black car, SUV, or you can choose UberX, the low-cost Uber for a ride in a hybrid or mid-range car. Payment is seamless and cashless. Build to your card on file with no need to tip. Enter the promo code TV Confidential after you download the app to receive a free first ride up to $20. For more information, go to get.uber.com forward slash go forward slash TV Confidential. Ham Cam Caricatures will keep the fun rolling at your next party, convention, or event through a live video feed. As friends or colleagues gather around the webcam, I can see them on my screen, and they can view my caricatures come to life on their own screen. <laughs> a completed black and white drawing will then be emailed to you to print out. Pricing and details are at hamcamcaricatures.com. That's H-A-M-M-C-A-M-C-A-R-I-C-A-T-U-R-E-S dot com. Buying or selling a home can be one of the most stressful things we'll ever do in life. But it doesn't have to be. And no one knows better than our friends at Front Porch Realty Group. 
Their community of realtors serving the Northern Bay Area of California that cares about their clients as individuals first and foremost. Whether you're a first-time buyer or looking to lease or sell your property in the Bay Area, Front Porch Realty Group will help you through this important transition by providing you with the right information for your situation while lessening the pain. They also work with a network of realtors throughout California who provide the same high caliber of customer service. Call Front Porch Realty Group at 415-886-7411 for a realtor referral near you. You can also visit their website, frontporchrealtygroup.com, for more information on the services they provide, including upcoming workshops and seminars. For more information, call 415-886-7411 or visit frontporchrealtygroup.com. Front Porch Realty Group. They'll find the solution that works best for you. Got a product or service that you want our listeners to know about? Become an advertiser or underwriter of TV Confidential and let our brand help promote your brand. For more information, go to televisionconfidential.com forward slash advertise or visit the TV Confidential page at advertisecast.com. Hi, this is Robert Hooks and you are listening to TV Confidential and keep doing it. When somebody loves you It's no good unless he loves you. Ed Robertson, along with our guest Julie Budd. Julie will be performing at the Birdland Theater in New York City from Wednesday, May 1st through Saturday, May 4th. She'll be performing her live show, The Songs of My Life, and the composers who wrote them. For tickets and more information, go to birdlandjazz.com. Julie's latest CD, Remembering Mr. Sinatra, Features Julie's interpretation of nine Frank Sinatra classics, including All the Way and Come Rain, Come Shine. Remembering Mr. Sinatra, as well as Julie's other CDs, are available at Amazon.com, iTunes, CD Baby, and wherever music is sold online. Julie's website, juliebud.com. You can also follow her on Facebook and on Twitter. You mentioned the word journey, your journey as a performer. Tell us about your journey, the your, your thought process in putting together, say, remembering Mr. Sinatra. Now, of all the songs you, you have to choose from, was it difficult to narrow it down to just nine? Well, no. Yes and no. I shouldn't say no. <laughs> yes and no. And I'm, no, 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 because I'm thinking of how, what it really was like, because I remember sitting on a floor in my living room with all this sheet music around me <laughs> and, and wanting to do them all, you know. Mm-hmm. But then I narrowed it down because if you do that, you can go absolutely crazy mm-hmm. because he had, you know, recorded like 2,000 titles in his career or 2,500, I mean, some crazy amount of songs that the, this man has recorded. So, I mean, you, you got to get organized or you will actually go crazy. Mm-hmm. So I needed to have a point of view and I thought to myself, you know, what I should really be doing if I want to keep this as a personal statement, and it is a personal statement, mm-hmm. what I was doing, mm-hmm. especially in, in the show, is why don't I do the things that we did when, I, uh, when we were in concert mm-hmm. together, the things that I heard him do on stage, the things that I sang, the things that he sang, what was that whole point of view like? And once I sort of zeroed into that, it became easy to choose, even if I chose something that wasn't exactly in the concert that night, let's mm-hmm. say, or on that tour. At least it started to take a point of view. And it goes back to what you said earlier. One of the things that sets you apart from any other, any other artist who does a tribute to Sinatra is you knew the man, you worked with the man, you performed with the man, and because you're choosing songs that you sung while you were tour- touring with Sinatra, that gives it an added authenticity, an added depth that nobody can, nobody else can bring. And I was very happy that I was fortunate enough to be able to do that. It's the same with this show, mm-hmm. you know, that I'm doing at Birdland. Mm-hmm. The songs of my life and the composers that wrote them. It's the same a fortunate position that I'm in. That I, I was able to know these people as I grew up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Anthony Newley, he's a perfect example. He was the nicest man on the planet. When Tony Newley died, I, I tell you something, I just sat in my apartment and cried mm-hmm. for a week. 
I mean, the man was an angel, and he was such a fine performer and such a kind, kind man. Well, he was the candy man. He was more than that. He was an angel. <laughs> I'm telling you, he was an angel. And, and I loved him dearly. And when we lost him, it was, it was just oh, horrible for me. And the thing is, is nobody could really do the show the way I'm doing it because I knew them. I'm, I'm not just standing up there and, you know, and, and wasn't this a nice song? Mm-hmm. Wasn't that a nice song? No, no, no. Song? I'm, I'm actually able to talk to them about what it was like to know, you know, Tony Newley and Michelle Legrand and Cy Coleman. And it shaped my life. You can't understand how it shaped my life. It was unbelievable because they, they introduced a level of work to a very young girl, you know, and, and that was the, the greatest gift of all. We're talking to Julie Budd, Julie Budd, the legendary singer-actress whom Merv Griffin famously dubbed the mini-girl with the maxi voice, when well, the New York Times considers Julie Budd the consummate performers. For our listeners in the New York area, Julie Budd will be performing the Birdland Theater in New York City from Wednesday May 1st through Saturday, May 4th, Julie will be performing the songs of my life and the composers who wrote them, including songs from Cy Coleman, Burt Bacharach, Hal David, Michelle Legrand, Duke Ellington, Paul Anka, Jules Stern, Marvin Hamlish, Herb Bernstein, and Jerry Herman. For tickets and more information, go to birdlandjazz.com. Julie, I understand you're going to be honored by the Friars Club in New York. Yes, uh, on May 14th. uh, It's called An Evening with Julie, but a celebration of a life in show business, and I'm going to talk about, uh, I'll sing about four or five songs, and of course my longtime conductor will be there, Herb Bernstein, who I've known since I'm 12 years old. I've had one conductor through my entire career. Is that insane? Nobody could believe it. I don't believe it. But um, I met Herb Bernstein when I was a kid in the Catskill Mountains, and he kind of discovered me and took me to Merv Griffin, and he was recording Merv, and Merv started putting me on TV every single week, and before I knew it, I was in show business, and I had a career. And Herbie Bernstein and I have stayed together since I'm 12 years old. We've traveled the world together, (laughs) and somehow I've had my life in music with Herbie Bernstein by my side. But he is a formidable artist in his own right. He has sold 40 million records with Tina Turner and John Denver. And Laura Nero, that first album that Laura Nero made, which uh, put her into the Hall of Fame, is the album that Herb orchestrated and produced. He worked with the Four Seasons, he worked with the Happenings, he worked with Dusty Springfield and Leslie Gore, and you name it, he worked with them. So he sold an enormous amount of, of records. He was a star in his own right. And he started to work more with uh, symphony orchestras and conducting, and he met me, and it was a perfect fit, and we've been working together since I'm 12. I know we have just a couple of minutes left. I do have an email question from a listener, a regular listener, David, in Plant City, Florida. David asks, Julie, what was it like to appear on the gym Neighbors Hour, uh, and was it a different experience for you than when you appeared on the Carol Burnett show, or were both shows more or less the same behind the scenes? Well, behind the scenes, they're the same in terms of having a certain organization and order. You know, variety shows are set up a certain way. Mondays are your table read. Tuesday, you're on your feet. Wednesday, you're headed for costumes. You know, it's all the same in terms of, it's like when you go into a Broadway show or a, <laughs> or a touring company. There's no difference in in how you do it. This a kind of formula that works in these shows, and you do it, and it's it's a work mode, and, and they all follow it. Where it's different, where it's different, it's the staff and the people. And, you know, Jim was a very, very unpretentious, warm, lovely man. Mm-hmm. So is Carol Burnett mm-hmm. that way. But Carol was more seasoned. Yeah. Carol, Carol was much more um, at home with variety. She'd been on Broadway and... You know, she had success in musicals, and, you know, she was a song and dance girl and and a comedy queen and a great actor. And, you know, with Jim, he was discovered, great singer, fun TV series, uh, a 
better actor than people really gave him credit for, if you will. Mm-hmm. And and the show had a very very, oh God, the the atmosphere on his set. I've never been on a set that was as warm and cozy as it was on Jim's show. As a matter of fact, as I'm talking to you right now, I'm looking at an old poster, a CBS poster of when I did those shows. Isn't that funny? I did four of his shows in one season. And then I went over across the hall and I did Carol Burnett's Christmas show. Now, when you got to Carol's set, it was the same thing. Lovely people, stone-cold pros, fabulous, fabulous. I learned so much on that set. But it was different, and it went faster, because Carol, Carol was a real pro. Mm-hmm. She, was a, she was out there for a long time doing this kind of work, and, you know, she had it down to a science. She was, uh, let me tell you something, the woman is a genius. And so they were both brilliant, but they had different styles. Everybody's got their little twist. Everybody's got their little style. You exactly, know? exactly, and it's that individual style that makes each of us unique. And and again, that goes back to honest. Well, and, that's what makes their show a hit. Mm-hmm. That's what makes the show a hit. Is that there really isn't anybody else like them, and so therefore, it's that little twist that they have on things that make you see the difference between them and everybody else. Julie, I understand that you are working on your memoirs. Is that is that true, and will it be coming out soon? I don't know if it's coming out soon. I have been working on this, and I am so slow. <laughs> I love writing, I lo- but I get so sideswiped because, look, I have the Friars thing coming up uh, this next month. Yeah. I have four nights at Birdland Theater. I have a couple of TV shows I'm, I'm working on. I'm working on a recording project right now. I may be going overseas next season, so we're working on something with that. So, you know, in between, I try to, to say, okay, today I'm going to write, because I notice that with writing, if you, if you don't discipline yourself and get up in the morning at 7 o'clock and say, today I'm writing, mm-hmm. you won't write. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the thing about writing. I do a lot of my writing on long flights. It's a great time because I'm alone Mm -hmm. and there's no disturbance and the phones can't ring. And that's a great time. So the more I fly, the more I write. (laughs) And that's the way it's been working lately. Well, I, I understand because you're also you're you're also busy doing stuff. So you know you're, you're you're busy living your life and you don't have time to sit down and write about your life. But when you do, I hope you'll come back and visit us again on TV Confidential when when your book comes out. It's been so great to talk to. I want to thank you so much. I wish you a really really beautiful holiday. And thank you for being so generous with me. I so appreciate it. Julie Budd will be performing at the Birdland Theater in New York City from Wednesday, May 1st through Saturday, May 4th. Julie will be performing the songs of my life and the composers who wrote them. For tickets and more information, go to Birdland Jazz. Dot com. Julie's latest CD, Remembering Mr. Sinatra, features Julie's interpretation of nine Frank Sinatra classics, including All the Way and Come Rain, Come Shine. Remembering Mr. Sinatra, as well as Julie's other CDs, are available at Amazon.com, iTunes, CD Baby, and wherever music is sold online. Julie's website, juliebud.com. You can also follow her on Facebook and on Twitter. If you haven't been listening to TV Confidential... This is who you're missing. Michelle Nichols. Adrienne Barbeau. Leonard Malton. Joyce Bullison. Peter Onorati. Judy Norton. Ken Berry. Rhonda Shear. Michelle Lee. Jacqueline Smith. Bruno Antonio. Shirley Jones. And many, many more of your favorite celebrities and people behind the scenes in the world of television. That's TV Confidential. Every week on this station. And every day online at televisionconfidential.com. <laughs> Accredited by Guinness World Records, welcome to Archival Television Audio, Incorporated. A peerless TV soundtrack archive, preserving the audio from television's first three decades, the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, the golden and silver age of television. For more information, go to atvaudio.com. Want a free first ride with Uber? Uber, the mobile app that connects you with a ride at the touch of a button in minutes. Enter promo code TV Confidential after you download the app to receive your first free ride up to $20. 
For more information, go to get.uber.com forward slash go forward slash TV Confidential. Become a TV Confidential confidant and receive unlimited access to the last five years of TV Confidential plus other exclusive members-only content. Enter the coupon code CONFIDENTIAL when you sign up to become a confidant and your first month of membership will be just four ninety-five. That's $5 off the regular monthly price. To join right now, go to televisionconfidential.com, click become a confidant and enter the coupon code CONFIDENTIAL. This portion of TV Confidential is brought to us by our friends at Front Porch Realty Group, the community of realtors in the Northern Bay Area of California that is committed to finding the solution that is best for their clients. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or looking to sell or lease your property in Northern California, call 415-886-7411 or visit frontporchrealtygroup.com for more information on how they can help you.